Okay, this video will be discussing the um, method in which to cut out and engrave on a guitar pick. Uh, there'll be two processes to this. One will be the newly draw screen, and the other one will be the computer, um, the laser actual process. Uh, the screen, of course, will be much cleaner, much clearer. Uh, the uh, computer will be a, not such a good video quality, but it'll get the point across. Okay, we have newly draw 2.0 open right now. So let's go to open up the uh, new file, start a new file. And this screen right here, this page layout, is just a visual representation for our usage of the laser uh, engravable area. The machine could care less what this page size is. It's irrelevant. All it needs to know is the object size, and that has to fit within the table. So this is just for our own uh, visual reference. So this can be ignored uh, outside of just our visual reference. Let's go to an imported file that I created earlier. And it's called the Dimensions 2. And it's already got a preview here of the shape of a, uh, a pick that I made. Okay, and let's zoom in so we can see it a little bit clearer. And like I said earlier, it did come in a little bit off the screen, but uh, off the page layout, uh, uh, page background. Uh, but that's just a simulation, so it's irrelevant. What we're going to do is we're going to create a list of text here because I want this text to engrave. And I also want this outline to cut. Okay, let's put this in the center, roughly to the side a little bit. The reason why I do that is I want to show you that. This is exactly how it would process. Of course, this pH is offset from the center of the pick tool, which we don't want. So holding the shift key allows me to click on the shape tool, and I have the pH and the outside of the uh, pick selected. Clicking on this button right here, which is the align button, allows me to align vertically these, this object to the last object selected, in this case, the pick tool. Okay, dead center now. That's what we want. Last thing I want to do is click on the pH just by itself. And earlier I had both selected. Clicking on the screen anywhere deselects everything. Clicking on just the pH means that's just selected, as you can tell by the nodes on the outside. Now, clicking on the left button with the uh, on the black color of the color palette, click with the left button, gives us a black inf uh, fill, meaning this object is going to engrave. Now, this already is red, but I want to show you clicking on the red with the right mouse button tells the system that we want this, whatever outline is uh, selected and colored, that is going to be cutting uh, process. Whatever is filled will be engraving process, okay? Next thing we need to do is come into the, the um, engrave layer to assign our power and speed settings. And the reason why we do that is that we need to make sure that we assign the right power and speed based on the material that we're working on, okay? In the case here, we are working on a, an outline which we want to cut out completely. It's a 3 32nd inch thick uh, cherry wood, and I find that 25 speed, of, which is velocity, represents speed, and millimeters a second is how fast it's moving. And I want to use 20% of the 50 watts of power the machine has available. That gives me just enough power to cut all the way through at a speed that gives me a nice edge. And this, of course, can be tested to get more optimal settings. You can go faster with higher power or slower with less power. It just depends on the edge quality you want and how fast you want it to uh, cut. Now we're coming up here to the drop-down list, and you can see here we have two colors, black for the engraving and red for the outline. And you see that check in the center means it's going to actually output. In other words, if you wanted to run this again because you didn't set your power properly to cut all the way through, you can tell it do not output the black, only output the red meaning it's only going to cut out the red. So you can choose which you want to cut or not. Of course, we do want it to output the black, so we want to engrave. I've already set up some settings that I experimented with earlier. 600 millimeters a second was a nice fast speed, and 10 watts of power of the 10% of the 50 watts of power gives me the optimal engraving that I want to achieve. Okay. Once we've done that, assign our power and speed for engraving and cutting. Okay, there's our engraving, and there's our power and speed for cutting. Click on OK. We want to come into this screen now, and this engrave out is there's only one button we really need to concentrate on, that's start engrave. When I click on this, I'm going to get an error message because this particular computer I'm doing this video on is not connected to the laser. So ignore that for now. But clicking on that gives us an error. You know, send data error because it's not connected to the laser. And once we've done that, we're ready to go into the next screen because this one we can do similar settings to the other screen that aren't no so much necessary here. And it's this screen right here, the panel which gives us similar ability as the previous screen we're into. And the most important one, though, that, that this is specifically to this screen is the unlock. That's going to allow us to unlock the lens assembly of the laser machine so we can move it manually by hand to any point we want to start on. Now, if I click on that now, I'm going to get an error message. Okay, That's because the data error send is an error message because the laser machine is not connected to this particular computer. 
um, but that would allow me to move it by hand. These steps right here mean, and the arrow is pointing in, means it's going to go in the direction of the button I push. So if I want to go down, click it on that, give me the error message again, would go in 100 millimeters steps, increments, okay? It could be 10 millimeters, it could be, um, you know, 50 millimeters, it could be whatever setting you put in there is how much distance it's going to move. 25.4, uh, 25 millimeters is just under uh, one inch, which is 25.4, so then it will move in one inch increments. I don't care to use that because it's going in those increments. I can move far faster just by unlocking and moving it by hand. Okay. Once I get it to the position I want, there's two selections here. And one thing to, to distinguish the two apart is draw will actually fire the laser beam, move will just move the lens assembly. Draw moves the lens assembly, move does it as well, but draw moves the lens assembly with a beam firing, move moves it without it firing. And you'll see on the, the next video, the red diode is our visual reference when it draws this rectangle or moves it of where our design, this pick, will fall within our material. It's a good visual reference to maximize your material usage so if you don't throw anything away because you never know when you might be able to use a smaller piece that's in there. Okay. Once you're ready to go, just click on start. And I'll get a message here because, again, this computer is not connected to the laser. Okay, send data error. Um, and then this will start the job immediately on the laser machine. Now, before we go to the laser machine video, operation video, uh, I want to mention the pause and stop. I highly recommend and I always stress to customers that when you want a job to, to stop or, or pause, always click pause first. Okay, the reason why is that it's going to stop momentarily where you're located and if you decide you don't like the, the uh, it's not dark enough or you want to you know, increase power or slow down the speed, then click on stop and it'll go back to the starting point you had it originally and it'll recreate your job in the same exact spot. If you have it running and you press on stop, that motor may be offset um, one, two, three millimeters. Any offset would definitely ruin that material because it would not start in the same exact spot. If you press pause, it definitely will uh, temporarily hold the, the motors and stop will put it back exactly where you started. Okay. With that said, this is newly draw, pretty straightforward on how to bring in an image, how to assign, um, bring in, type in some text, assign your power and speed to those colors, send it to the laser machine, and then finally run the laser machine. Okay. Let's go to the laser now. Now you're going to see the quality of this video is much different than what was on the screen because now I'm using my iPhone because I can't find my video camera um, or my stand. So uh, here's the layout we did earlier on the computer screen uh, in Newly Draw. And of course, we assign our power and speed settings, uh, which I'm just showing here to confirm again. Went into the uh, system setup to download the actual project. Okay. And then here in this screen, we want to unlock the, the lens assembly so that we can move the head where we want it to start. Okay. Right now, I'm not going to move it yet because I want to show how we control the focus adjustment. And over here on this uh, control panel, we have a few buttons. One is the lighting, which turns off the light, turn it on or off. Okay. One is a laser switch, which allows the beam to fire or not. We definitely want it down, so it will fire. Infrared is that red dot, turns it on or off. Reason for that is when you're cleaning it, you don't want it on, so it doesn't hit you in the eye. Air turns on the compressed air, which allows the beam. If you might be able to hear that, where the the underneath the nozzle is a opening for the lens, the air compressor to blow air so that it's less chance of flamage, flamage from the uh, cutting of the material. Okay, and we have a laser test button here which will manually fire the beam, which is used for uh, beam alignment. These are the two that are important up and down. Okay, what these up and down do is right now I have two dots. I'm going to bring it up until those two dots equal one. When they're one dot, now we know we're in focus. Two dots, definitely out of focus. Okay. So bring that back up, now we're in focus. Now let's move that lens assembly up to the material starting point where we want it to go. I'm gonna put to the top left corner. And now that it's unlocked, it's ready to go. So I'm gonna click on this uh, start button. And what that's going to do is start the job. Now as it's engraving, it's doing the uh, pH first, of course, which is the engraving procedure. It always must do engraving first. The reason for that is if you cut out this pick, um, once it's cut out, it drops down slightly, taking the material out of focus from what we did a minute ago with the up and down focus. Problem with that is, with cutting, it's not such a big issue when you're um, out of focus slightly because it's not too noticeable because you're cutting through material. When you're engraving, though, it can be very pronounced if you're out of focus, meaning 
the quality of the edge or the, the object or whatever it is that you're engraving could look pretty bad. So you definitely want to engrave first, and that's what it's doing here. It's doing the pH first. Uh, finish up the P right now. Now it's working on the H. Once it completes that, then it can go to the next color in the engraving uh, menu system that you set up. Typically, you only use two colors, uh, black for engraving, red for cutting. Uh, but there are times when you might want to use multiple colors for engraving. You want something that's really dark and a lot of power, something very light with very little power, or if you want to cut something all the way through, but another color you might want to just etch in the material, not actually cutting all the way through. So there are reasons why you would use other colors. The most obvious or the most used ones, though, are always going to be black and red. Black, in this case, the pH for the engraving, and now it's coming to the cutting. That's the red color. So once it finishes that cutting, we can move the head out of the way, click on that unlock again, okay? And what the unlock does, it allows us to move the head out of the way, move our material, pick up your piece, set it in a place we can see clearly, and there is your pick.